Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So if you haven't already seen my Batman trailer reaction, please go check out that. So I posted that and a few other videos yesterday. So honestly, I was just going to have today as a relaxing, chill out day, but I couldn't stop thinking of the Batman trailer and my different theories going on in my head. So I thought I'd make a video. It's kind of a breakdown theory video, whatever you want to call it. So a few people were quite skeptical of Robert Pattinson being cast as Batman, but I wasn't one of those people. I always knew that he would do an amazing job. You know, I think too many people give him a hard time over the whole Twilight thing, but they actually haven't seen that he's been in a lot of other incredible movies and he is a really good actor. So I already had pretty high expectations going into this. Um, but after I saw the trailer, my expectations were just taken to another level and it honestly gave me goosebumps watching this trailer and it's bittersweet because on one hand, I'm so excited and so happy about it, but we still have over a year to wait. So it's kind of frustrating at the same time. It's really, really frustrating, but you know, at least we have something good to wait for. Um... You know, after 2020, I think we all need something to be excited for. Um, so the first thing I think is that people just really seem to have such a buzz over this trailer. Like I haven't really seen something people have been this excited about since the Joker movie came out because I think Batman is just one of those characters that people find relatable you know, he's not like some super fit, perfect goody-goody two-shoes like Captain America or, you know, Superman. He's, he's I would, don't want to say the everyday man because he's definitely not the everyday man. He's still a billionaire, but I guess that's sort of the point. He is this really rich, blue-blood, aristocrat-type guy who could be living his best life off on a yacht, you know, with models and... You know, all of that, and he's not. Instead, he's fighting for the, the little people, you know. He's out there risking his life every day. And I think that that is a much more realistic symbol of what a hero is than somebody who seems so perfect like Captain America and Superman. Batman is flawed. He has his issues. He's a broken person, but he's still chooses to rise above it and that is what people find so relatable about his character. So my first theory is that the Waynes aren't actually good people. I feel like in most Batman movies we see the Waynes portrayed as these really kind-hearted people that are working to make Gotham a better, safer city. But let's face it, they're billionaires in Gotham City. So chances are that they're not actually as squeaky clean as they look. So having Bruce idolise his parents, put them on a pedestal after they die, and then finding out that they actually had like mob ties or shady business dealings in some way, I feel like that is a really realistic storyline and sort of working with his character being such a broken individual because he has to fight his parents' own legacy in a way. And I would really like to see that in this movie. You know, that doesn't work in every Batman movie because that's not the feel and the tone of the movie. But I feel like this one is going for that realistic, dark, gritty approach. So I feel like it would work really well in this particular movie. So my second theory with the whole Batman-Catwoman dyna dynamic we see Batman and Catwoman together romantically in a lot of different places. So I feel like we could maybe get a bit of a romantic storyline in this movie. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't feel like they need romance. And in a lot of superhero type movies, I wish that they didn't even give them romantic storylines because I feel like in a way it takes away from the central plot of the movie. Like, you know, when it... um focuses too much on that but still it would work in some ways if they decided to go down that path um you know if it didn't overshadow the other stuff 
And um, yeah, I really like them together when they're done right. Like in the Gotham TV show, the whole Batcat, pre-Catwoman, pre-Batman, who was so, so cute. I loved that storyline. Um, and in this one, you know, Catwoman isn't really Catwoman yet. Like it's a pre-Catwoman Catwoman. She's still building up to being the person that we know and love. So having her maybe get to know Bruce Wayne outside of his Batman persona and then falling for him a bit and then seeing that tension brought into it when they find out who their alter egos are could be a really interesting storyline. And then, you know, I feel like even though they both are in a way those darker anti-heroes, like I wouldn't call Selena Kyle a straight up villain you know, maybe you disagree, but I have always seen her as like an anti-hero. But still, I think they would clash heads eventually. And eventually Bruce would be like, hey, I'm just not okay with what you're doing, you know, and that could add some really interesting dynamics to the movie. But we'll have to wait and see. So the other thing that I really like about it is he's smudged under eye makeup. I feel like that is something I've never seen in a Batman movie or TV show before. Like they normally have him take off his bat suit and he's got like this perfectly coiffed hair, no makeup, and it's just so unrealistic. And that's the whole tone of this movie is realism. So seeing him look scruffy and messy, I feel like that just really takes it to the next level. So I haven't actually seen a live adaption of Batman that I've really loved so far. David Mazous on Gotham was amazing, but that was more of an origin story. You know, we didn't really get to see him with his bat suit on until the last episode of Gotham. But still, this could be, it is sort of an origin movie. You know, the characters in it aren't fully formed yet, but still, I would say he is still Batman, even if he is only in year two. He's still fully formed. And... I would say Affleck is my favourite Batman, but I really think Pattinson could take the number one spot. I really do have faith that he's the Batman I've always wanted. Um, and as for the the villains, the Riddler played by Paul Dano, Dano, however you say his name, um, I don't feel like I've seen enough of him from this trailer to really make an accurate judgment on what he's going to be like if he's going to be more flamboyant or if he's going to be more toned down and serious like I don't know but yeah it's it'll be really interesting to see the whole aspect with the cards and the game sort of like he's playing like mini saw type games with Batman which is really interesting and I hope they do take it in that really dark approach to the games like that'll be really cool to see and as for Colin Farrell his portrayal of Penguin well same thing I don't really feel like we've seen enough to really make a judgment call but based on the look well you wouldn't even know it's Colin Farrell would you like it it really does look like he's just completely transformed into another person um though I really 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 love the Oswald Cobblepot that we saw in Gotham, if any of you have seen that, and I know I keep talking about that because I love it so much, but that was my favourite Oswald. He just did such a good job. I don't really see anybody touching that role. And honestly, anything is better than the Penguin that we saw in Tim Burton's movie, which still gives me nightmares. Like, that was just terrifying. Um, so Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon, um, yeah, yeah, I think he looks like he's good in the role. He definitely fits it. I feel like he's got that air about him of just being really downtrodden and just over it all. And I don't know, I just feel like I can sense that from the trailer, but he's just sort of reached his limit and then, you know, Batman would step in and maybe that's why he's so... He's so, um, you know, lenient towards Batman, letting him walk onto the crime scene like we saw in the trailer, which, yeah, that is not going to happen in real life, let's face it. And he would probably have a lot of the cops complaining that there's this guy dressed in a big bat suit just walking all over their crime scene. 
Like, yeah, that in real life, he's going to get shot by the cops or something. You know, they're not going to just let him walk onto their scene. But, um, yeah, it's good to see in every sort of adaption. I feel like him and Jim Gordon have a different relationship. And I know, I know I keep talking about Gotham, but I really liked the Jim Gordon on that show. So he had a completely different vibe to Jeffrey Wright. As for the Batmobile... I think that looks really cool. I think it's the best Batmobile I've seen since the Nolan verse. I still prefer the Nolan verse Batmobile. Like, I think that just looked incredible, especially on the big screen. And as for the bat suit, I'm really happy with that. I think it looks amazing, though. It's not really hard to beat some of the bat suits that we've had. At least this one doesn't have any nipples on it. <laughs> Um, yeah, one thing I would really love to see, though I know it's never going to happen, is a Joker crossover because the Joker movie was so, you know, similar in tone, being dark and gritty and grounded in reality. But it doesn't take any stretch of the imagination to imagine them sharing a universe together. But having said that, you know, with the timeline and everything and all the red tape they have to do to put things together like I don't know all about the studios and stuff like that but yeah I, I don't think that it will happen though I would love 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 to see Pattinson and Phoenix on the same screen together yeah there's just so many things they could do with the Batman universe like I would love to see the comics of White Knight comics put into a movie I think that would be really interesting and an Arkham, Arkham Asylum, like, horror movie, I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Though I don't know if even DC would go that dark, but it would be really cool to see. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. What are your theories and speculations? And please help me out and subscribe. Thank you.